Hello, I'm Debbie Mercer, Dean of the College of Education at Kansas State University. I am pleased to introduce the film Vale la Pena, which in Spanish means worth the pain or worth the struggle. Since 2012, the College of Education and our campus partners have had the honor of hosting approximately 500 teachers from Ecuador as part of the Go Teacher program. These are experienced English teachers who left their homes and families for several months and up to a year for those earning a master's degree. The goal is to perfect their English, learn new teaching strategies, and infuse their classrooms with these new skills. This has been a rich learning experience for everyone involved, and the GO teachers have left an indelible mark on our K-State faculty, students, and communities. Theirs is a collective story of sacrifice and determination, and of a nation that believes investing in education will ensure its economic future. American people, they want exactly the same that the Ecuadorian people want. We all work towards the same goals. We want a good job. We want to do something that we're passionate about. A nice family. People who love and support us. A good place to live. Somewhere we are happy to call home. And, and peace. When you think about it, we have more in common than we do apart. We want exactly the same things. The government was offering to English teachers a program, and the name was Go Teacher. When I first knew about the program, I was very excited because it was something different. Not any other government before has ever done something like this to offer the chance to teachers to go to another country to improve their teaching skills. That's something huge. All these experiences there during the training will help the teachers to be more effective with their students. It is not only to learn a language. Besides, it was the opportunity to learn the culture because when we learn a new language, it is the opportunity to learn the culture too. Bueno, esto es muy muy importante. Ha existido pues un intercambio sobre todo de costumbres. Recordemos que no solamente se trata de eh, intercambiar conocimiento académico, sino que el, el tema cultural. El... So when it first opened, I, I said to myself, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be part of this new challenge. I'm going to take this opportunity. I think as a lot of people now realize, Ecuador has made a major commitment to uh, enhancing uh, English speaking. They know that if they're going to really move from a developing country to a more powerful country in the world, that English is uh, one of the key methods to do so. We have done study abroad trips to other countries, but it's the first time to bring a large group of teachers to K-State. So we were very excited about that for, for K-State in general, for our college in particular, and just the fact that we would get to spend time with them. And I think that's what differentiates this program from many, is that we have 
in service. These are actual working teachers who are already passionate and committed to their profession um, coming here to K-State so we get to learn from them. We've given a whole lot because we see it as an investment in the future of children and families and, and teachers. So the depth has been much greater and the, the commitment on our part has been much greater. I, I think most of us at Kansas State University who've worked with the Ecuadorian students feel like Ecuador is our sister country. And so to provide an opportunity for our undergraduates, our future teachers to go and be in the system there and finish out linking what they learned from the teachers who were here proves to be exciting, fulfilling. Um, it's kind of like patting yourself on the back as, as a teacher, as an educator, and saying, look, our students now are learning here and they're teaching here. Hello, my name is Tess Ostermiller, and I am excited to go to Ecuador. I've never left the country. I've traveled all over the United States, but never left the country. So I think for me, going over there and actually applying these techniques is going to be beneficial. And they tell us all the time how excited these kids are to learn and that the desk doesn't matter to them and the piece of paper they have doesn't matter, but they're there because they want to be, because they don't have to be there. My family, they're excited for me, but they're nervous for me to leave the country. I'm accident prone, so they're kind of worried about that. <laughs> but opportunities like this don't come up very often, so you have to take that chance. And it's been my dream to tra travel the world, so this is my starting point. I want to use this experience as a really great learning experience. My husband was, well, can I go? I really want to go. I want to go. My family, they are all really surprised that I would be wanting to do something like this and that I am going on my own. And so therefore, this experience is going to be so much different because I won't have like that safety net. I'm very attached to my family and I get homesick a lot. So I know that the first couple of days I'm gonna be calling my mom and saying, Mom, why did you let me do this? I first started doing dental hygiene and then when I was at the community college, we took a trip to Chicago and I just fell in love with what the teachers in Chicago were doing. They were trying to incorporate culture and teaching other languages to their students and I thought that's something that I want to do. I'm super excited to be visiting Ecuador. I can't wait, I wish it was tomorrow. <laughs> I'm really excited and ready to take on this new adventure. My name is Gabriela Muñoz, and uh, I come from a town which is called uh, Yaguachi, but my family is very big. My parents passed away several years ago, and uh, I'm the youngest, you know, but I have many nephews and, and, and nieces, okay? They are adolescents, some of them. They are little kids, and uh, I like taking them to the movies or to the swimming pool or to the park. I enjoy spending my time with them. And I guess I am their favorite aunt. <laughs> my family, we are really united, we are really together. When there's holidays, um, in Christmas, we try to spend most of those times on those special occasions together. My father used to encourage us, my sister and me, a lot into learning English because he always tell us that English is going to be uh, 
it's going to open you new doors in the future and all of that knowledge and that practical knowledge we can bring our students in different ways. I wanted to study a master's degree for quite some time, but because I was working here and there, well, I couldn't do it. And I always had in mind the fact that I wanted to do that, not in Ecuador, but in a different country, especially in US. And here I am. My mom, she was very happy about it. And we're really close, right? Because um, I don't have a father. I never met him. And a, my mom, she, she said, oh, it's just one year, go for it, do it. With the classes that I have so far here in KSU, I came to realize that we English teachers have all of this new knowledge about um, methodologies and strategies to teaching, and those can be applied not only to teaching English, but also teachers from other disciplines like science, history, math. This is the beautiful thing about education. Probably a doctor, maybe, maybe is going to stop studying, say, oh, I studied for eight or 10 years and I have enough of it or something like that. But for teachers, no. It was like, this is your time. It, as some people say, God was uh, reserving this for you. And uh, you, you were patient and now you have it. We got here at night and we couldn't see anything, but in the morning when we woke up, everyone was out the door and looking out because it's just so beautiful. It's adventurous. There's always something new to do. It's gorgeous. It's kind of breathtaking how high up with all the mountains and the clouds. Right? So we'll hike first. Yes. Warm up and then we'll get to the cold water. Yeah. So we're walking down and we're then walking. coming back up. Yep. And then walking down. And then walking down. And then, walking and then back coming up. back up to take the cable car. Yeah, yeah. Go exercise. Go exercise. All right. Gorgeous. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been. I mean, the landscape itself was gorgeous. Every day you wake up and it was just gorgeous. Beautiful, calm, relaxing, and uh, nice. It's not stuff we have in Kansas, so whenever I get the opportunity to see the forest or the waterfalls, it's always a good experience. Pictures don't do this place justice. And as many pictures as I've taken, I can't tell them enough how beautiful it is when you show up to Ecuador. How would I describe the culture of the experience in Ecuador? Authentic, traditional wear. The smells and the different fruits and vegetables and how many. My favorite would be seeing the indigenous people when we go to those markets, buying stuff from the vendors. They want to make you happy. They want to become tour guides. They want to show you around. They are so proud of their country. Ecuadorian people are friendly, and when people here in Manhattan are friendly too, no? They are uh, like open mind people and they embrace culture. Everybody is really nice. <laughs> Everywhere you go, here for example, I've seen that if somebody looks at you, they, they smile, they say hi. I think one of the most surprising things here is that you can feel a sense of community. They are really nice, and even though the students that come from different states in the U.S. and also different countries, uh, you can feel that sense of community. Well, I think that media sometimes portrays America in some specific ways. I have a little assumption before coming here. 
my previous advisor and program director. She told me, everything is going to be all right, you're going to be safe. So I was really happy to come here. <laughs> The first week was but was okay because we didn't have classes like immediately, so we had the chance to know, to visit different places, to go around. I was really really happy. I was taking pictures of all the places around, visiting some places, meeting new people. Uh, go to Walmart and also to the Best Buy in order to see the technology. <laughs> I like the, 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 you know, the, the buildings, the way they look, and the grass and the trees. I really enjoyed going to the concert prayer because I was able to see the sunset and it was awesome. I think that in my country we also have, but I don't have the opportunity to enjoy that. Being outside and taking time for yourself is, is really, really nice. We had the time to get together not to educational things, but to actually know each other. One, two, three, smile. We get a chance to, to talk and, and to know more about us, our lives. Those are not only my classmates, but also my friends. In fall of 2011, an idea was born by President Correa to improve English language education in Ecuador. I was contacted by a friend uh, from my master's program uh, in Ecuador who was at the Ministry of Education with an email that said, something big is going down, do you want to be part of it? We had an opportunity to be part of the conversation at University of Mississippi and were asked to bring on partner institutions. I got a call from Mona Menking, and Mona said, would you like to have a group of Ecuadorians who are wanting to improve their English skills? Could Kansas State host such a program? And I said, give me two days, and I'll see. So I brought together the Office of International Programs and the College of Education's uh, Center for ESL and Teaching. My boss, uh, Dr. Sabates, called me up stairs and said, uh, you know, Dr. Sumez has a potential project. Is there something that we could do to be involved? And I said, oh, yeah, we'd love to be involved. So I went downstairs and wrote a proposal. And two days later, I had an email saying, OK, on March 8th, you need to be in Ecuador at 1030 in this space. And I'm going, OK. <laughs> and uh, I was very uh, lucky because Dr. Herrera also agreed to go. In a couple of days, do you want to go to Ecuador? And of course, with me, that's like, yeah, let's go to Ecuador. That sounds fun. Let's go for 24 hours. And basically, Mary Wood and Dean Mays and myself uh, and Mona got on a plane two days later and flew to Ecuador. And, and then it's like, well, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, you're going to get all of these students. Yes, three weeks is probably when she first heard. And I was brought into the conversation when we were about two weeks into it. So it was, we have two weeks. Uh, do we think it's possible? Is everyone on board? And we all jumped and said, this sounds fantastic. It's exciting. I think through our learning about Ecuador's educational system, compiling the themes that emerge from the voices before they arrive, I think all of us have become better faculty, better instructors as a result of having to think through who is the participant, what are their needs, and how do I move toward having those uh, needs met.
the fact that there are big differences between Ecuador and U.S. regarding the educational system is, it's real. After finishing high school, they just get a job and then they have a family and that's it. They don't see the opportunity uh, that is uh, available for everyone. I will say that most of the kids had parents that didn't finish high school and probably because of that, teachers and parents also involved don't have those high expectations of their kids. The education was better in private schools, but now that we have like an overall curriculum, now the, the things are changing in Ecuador. Public schools are getting more support from the government, but still we need to work, with, we still need to continue working on that. Being part of the of the educational system of the United States, it was really different. It's not the, the teacher that comes to class and lectures for two hours. The teacher say, okay, so this is literature circle. This is the theory that you should know about this, but let's do this, let's do this. We have to reflect, we have to analyze, and then we have to write down our ideas. And I think that it was not an easy task. I think it has been difficult. So I knew it was going to be hard because uh, here we, we should read a lot, we should write a lot. They asked me if studying here was hard and I told them yes. I say, how hard, like in, in four days I have slept 10 hours. And that's true. It is tough right now, we have a lot of things to do, we have the internship, we have two classes, we have to write this final white paper, we have to prepare the portfolio, many things. I know that probably most of these teachers that are going back to teach in Ecuador, they're gonna face this, uh, this issue, having all the, the resources, all the technological resources. We have good classes, but not enough. We don't have the technology, we have to share one CD player for two or three English teachers because we have around 40 students for class and I have six classes. Class sizes are way bigger than what we're used to and they all range from different ages. It's a new thing. It's very different when you walk in there. I mean, they still do an awesome job teaching. This journey is been one that I'll never forget and that will change my career as a teacher and the way I look at what we have in America. And I've learned to adapt. I've learned how to do something differently without the resources. I gotta say that there were two things that changed at K-State. First was how I would feel with students. The tools that they gave us, the collection of techniques, that changed me as a person. It was like leveling up as a teacher. I became more confident about myself. Here, the teachers are teaching the same methods and techniques that we've been learning at K-State, so that's been nice to see how they actually work in our classroom. So when it comes the class of a Go teacher, it is different, it is not that way. It's like everybody talking, students in different groups, everybody trying to, to get involved trying to give their opinions inside the groups. So it's different. The kids feel like it's not uh, a class. They, they just love it. And uh, that's the cool thing about these strategies. They respond incredibly different because they, I have asked them, how do you feel about it? Did, did you like the activity? What did you like the most? Yes, means I like it because it's different. It's not just like making grammar exercises or it's not just like standing there and being sat and looking at the board and copying things. It's like we move in class, we work, we speak, we, we develop, we improve. Now the classes are, are, are different. Teachers make students work in groups using this collaborative learning and students are participating more, trying to speak, and trying to, to teach English as a language. As an English teacher, we have a great expectations. We have a big expectations because we have to change. We want to change our students. 
We don't want to have the same education that like we had. We want to have a different one. But there's only one way to change the system. It's actually being ourselves, teaching what we were trained to teach. I go to school and I see that all of this crazy thing really works. For me, the biggest sacrifice I've had to make is eating. Every day I would tell Jamie, Jamie, I really want mac and cheese. And we tried to look for it at the store, but they didn't have any. So when I got here, the first thing I did was I ate mac and cheese. I miss our family reunion. The families come from Arizona and Alabama and all over to meet up and celebrate that time. Overall, it was a great experience and I would do it again. We were actually in the culture, like we were the ones that went somewhere new and we were the ones that didn't know the language. I don't speak Spanish, so I guess I got a different perspective and first-hand perspective of what students feel like when they come here from another country. I mean, I couldn't communicate with other people and you have to learn how to do other things to communicate, you know, writing, drawing. You can say you understand if somebody comes in from another country and you can feel, you know, have sympathy and empathy for them. But you don't understand it till you live it and living there for three weeks with the students, I learned so much. Just being able to be exposed to something like that opened my eyes. That's probably the most beneficial part of it. I think not only me, but also everybody involved into this program we have made lots of sacrifices in order to come here. It was really hard to say goodbye from my family because it was, I knew that it was going to be a year and a long year. I'm far away from home, but I, I know that my mom is there supporting me in everything that I do. My fiance was a little bit sad in the beginning because we, we do everything together. She was really supportive also and she said, Go for it, it's just a year, I will visit you there. The mere fact that I, I, I don't have a salary for a year, it's, it's, it's sacrifice. To be away from family, from people who are very close to you, it's sacrifice. I was concerned about their, their well-being. I feel very positive, a lot of faith in God, and I said, well, I hope you I know you will be okay. We try to support each other. In some cases, it is easier than in other cases. All of us, we have had a, a, a difficult time sometimes for one or another reason. Sometimes it's the spicy food, sometimes it's the weather, sometimes the amount of homework, sometimes it's the fact that you miss your family that much. A lot of factors, so, but, we, we try to support each other, which is the, the positive thing about that. We had a major blizzard hit Manhattan, and consequently all the um, flights were canceled for about uh, at least 24 hours. The students were scheduled to leave, I think it was over like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the following Wednesday or Thursday was Christmas. Once we got an American Airline uh, person on the phone, we said, don't go away. We have a line, and we took one student after the other to rearrange um, their flights. They were supposed to be leaving Saturday and Sunday. The dining halls had closed on Friday, so they didn't have any food. There's a local restaurant owner, um, Carlos O'Kelly's, provided the students a free meal during that time. Sue Mays called me at home. She said, Jim, we have a problem, and I need your help. We were happy to do that. Many of them were crying because they loved their families and we tried to uh, celebrate the occurrence and their experience and give them confidence that it, it would be all right. And so we brought them up actually in this very room. Uh, we navigated through it and uh, I think it was a connecting and, and warm feeling to have with them.
Adibus was just a huge integral part of our success there and their drivers got up Christmas Day even I got a call at like 4.30 in the morning from an Adibus driver who was supposed to pick up a student that had overslept and so I was telling him her apartment number and he got out of his van and you know went and knocked on the door and woke her up and that's really just above and beyond what they're expected to do. And I only had a certain amount of time to get them there or they would have had to find another way to get there. It worked out fine. I didn't know anybody knew about that. They're far away from home. You know, the families are back home. They're, they're gonna be separated for a while. And uh, I just try to show them a little respect and kindness. That's all, you know. They were classy, had a lot of talent. You wouldn't believe the talent that was here. You know, people just see Ecuadorians. Man, I saw the talent. I got a present from Ecuador and my scarf that I can't wear. <laughs> I miss them. I miss Carlos, Carla, Marco, I can name you Eduardo, Eduardo Edgar, Jessica, I, Joanne. I just go on, man. I could tell you a whole bunch of people that are just were wonderful. If I can, I want to go to Ecuador. That'd be a nice place to retire live out the rest of my life there. Started out as a, just a requirement for my class. I ended up just emailing Israel and after like a couple weeks of meeting up every week and talking and began to be more natural and just like an actual friendship. One of the benefits of being able to meet up with Israel and be able to practice my Spanish has been be able to ask questions in an environment that's different than the classroom. It's so much different learning Spanish in the classroom and then whenever you actually are speaking with native speakers you learn so much more and more phrases that are unique um, to their region and um, just perspectives on where they come from. Essentially, yeah, once you meet one Ecuadorian, you kind of meet a bunch of their friends. And so I actually met Israel. Um, he was like coming into my car. We were going to cat tracks to go salsa dancing. We went to Worlds of Fun, and Israel went on his first roller coaster ever. But I didn't know that until he was like going up like the hill and he was like really nervous <laughs> and it was fantastic like I'll never forget his scream and it was priceless. <laughs> it's really hard to not walk across campus and not run into one of the Ecuadorians. They really make an effort to really um, bring their culture um, to the rest of the students here and just to bridge the gap. They just have a big presence. There was an event at the Union last year, I think it was like a talent show, and they just had like a big fan club because one of their friends was singing a song. And so they, they had flags and everything, and it's just like, they bring a lot of excitement and enthusiasm, and they have a very tight-knit community. Muchísimas gracias por todo. Um, ustedes son una familia para mí, y muchas gracias por todo. The Ecuadorian students have added a, a whole bunch, I think, to our program. I hope that they've benefited from uh, being in our classes and learning some new ideas about teaching and students and teaching methods and so forth, but they've added a whole bunch to our program. They bring a different perspective. There were many days when class was over and everyone left and I looked around the room and thought, I think I was the biggest learner here today. We can all learn from each other. So I always tell them that and emphasize that, and at the same time, you know, take that to heart and, and, and try to learn from my students as well. I think it's given people, and I'm, I'm gonna say faculty as well, a different perspective. But I think they have made us look at things differently. They would talk about what education is like in Ecuador, and they would talk about classroom sizes and resources and different things like that. One of my favorite days in class was when we were all gathered together and we were sharing just about the things that we hoped for the students that we teach. And 
I heard lots of people just on the little side conversations and backstories were saying, I thought I was the only one. And it doesn't matter if you're here in the United States or if you're teaching in Ecuador, we have the same concerns, the same worries, the same celebrations for our students. My name is Deb North and I'm the principal of Woodrow Wilson Elementary. It is with great pleasure and honor that we are able to host five Ecuadorian teachers in our school. We always want our students to have a worldwide perspective and the only way they can do that is by having first-hand experiences with people of many cultures. My name is Lori Martin and I am the principal here at Berkman. They made such a positive impact and strong impression on our teachers that now when I send out an invitation to host an Ecuadorian teacher, I always have people that I have to put on a waiting list and turn away, and so it's, it's a good, good thing. We did have some students that were working on a penguin project, and as soon as they were talking about the Galapagos penguins, they realized, oh, this is right near where our teacher was. This is right by Ecuador. So it was like their world was just opened up with that geography and that knowledge and understanding. They're in our school family picture, and so I don't know if you can see that, but there's, I think there's four uh, that are here as part of our school family, and we just really consider them part of our team. So um, it wasn't anything that even had to be encouraged. I mean, they just naturally went out the door with us, and, and uh, they're part of, of who we are. I'm so proud of them and so thankful and look forward to continuing that partnership. My advice to Ecuadorians, if you're coming here, it will be like, first of all, if you're coming in winter, I will say warm clothes. Get ready for a year of uh, different weather <laughs> and the weather that we're accustomed to, to experience in Ecuador. Get ready to meet people from different places with different point of views and get ready to work hard. The learning they will get here is very valuable and uh, if they come believing in what they think would change education in Ecuador, they, they should have a kind of personal commitment. I would like to tell them that they need to be optimistic and to be brave enough to take risks because being uh, outside of your comfort zone or being outside of your family or your close friends is very difficult. Sometimes we're like, oh man, I have to do this, I have to do that, all this thing again, and things like that. But I think that at the end of the day, it's a fantastic experience. This is the way you can help the country. Here you have, go, go and come back, because what we will, the changes we will see in the future, you will feel uh, like I was part of that change. If you're going to travel, like, forget about complaining and be ready to learn something new every single day. Be open. Be very, very open. And that's what I would give the advice is make sure you're ready just to go with the flow. Embrace the experience and take it all in. Be ready to be homesick. Be ready to love it and be ready to be homesick and love it because it's a day-to-day -day battle. And be flexible. Flexibility is the biggest thing. Sometimes it's kind of difficult to, to get to know each other, especially American ones. We are really friendly, and if they want to get to know ourselves better, they just need to ask something, or they just have the opportunity to talk with us. We can be good friends. <laughs> Every single day is like a new adventure because you don't know what to expect. So somehow, every day you are your comfort zone. <laughs> That's what uh, the country needs, us to come back and to be part of the change that to the whole country needs. It's like, I feel more motivated now. Be before, I haven't felt this way, 
like I feel good now thinking of doing good for more people. It's worth it. I mean, all of the effort that you're doing here is going to be recognized later, and it definitely is worth it. My professors all that I have the opportunity to meet uh, were awesome. I I like to say that thank you so much because I have learned a lot and they are not just teachers but human beings. We have a bunch of experiences that we have had here. Yeah, and, and the most important is to learn from every single one of them. So that's my final message. If I was to get into President Correa's brain, which I think would be too complex, but uh, I believe that he sees in the country as having the top educational system in the world for a country of its size. Because I don't think he'll stop just as English and Spanish. I think he'll move toward Mandarin and French and German and say, let's become citizens of the world. And it's wonderfully fulfilling because you can see a systematic change within their education system. And then you hear from random teachers that come up, oh my gosh, she is sharing with me all these new things that she's doing with her students that she learned at K-State or that she learned at NMSU. And so they share with you and they're sharing with other colleagues in their schools. If each person taught another 10 years and each person touched 40 students, the number of lives that would be touched just by that one group was truly astounding. And then you think of how many other participants we've had since then. It is society transforming. So it's, it's, it's the way it should be done. I think that uh, as an educator, I absolutely am passionate that education is the key to um, economic development. So if you can start there, people will be empowered and language and education just go hand in hand with doing that. I think the Ecuadorian government is being extremely smart by investing, not just in education, but investing uh, in an area of education that is needed. What they are doing is going to show in 20 years and people are going to remember Go Teachers and Kansas State as uh, a first for Latin America. We can talk about a story very successful around the program Go Teacher. And we can talk about a very rich story. That's the goal, to reach the excellence in, in academics, to improve education, to improve the quality of education. If I would have to sum up the Go Teacher program in three words, it would be that. Vale la pena. Every sacrifice we make, every battle we fight, every meal we eat, every hot chili pepper that comes on my plate, you know, whatever it is, it's worth it. The acquired knowledge that you obtain by being here, vale la pena. The interaction, the human interaction that you have, Vale la pena. I mean, I, every aspect of this program, in my mind, is, is a worthwhile investment.